Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Porch Talk. And we are so excited today. We've been waiting for this moment. Um, we have the privilege and honor of uh, talking with evangelist um, John Ramirez. And yes, he has got a great message. So if you are living in fear or you're ha battling the enemy, you are not going to want to miss this episode. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's right. a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. It's going to be an amazing time. Pleasure to, um, to meet you. And so we're going to get started. And um, we would like to hear about your personal testimony. You have an incredible testimony. We've read both your books. Uh, you have an amazing story of how you were raised and the relationship you had with Satan. So you can know. you share with our viewers today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not where you start, it's where you finish, right? Yes. And I think God, God uh, knew my address. <laughs> God knew your me. address. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. But, you know, I, I grew up at the age of eight years old. I was already going to demon church. And uh, I was already in, in, pra in practicing the demonic uh, contract with demons principalities, territory demons. I was uh, uh, I was being trained and groomed by witches and warlocks in the demonic scrub. So at the age of eight, we would go to church, we, we would go to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning. Wow. And uh, and that was like, you know, it, it was a religious thing, nonstop wow. and being trained, uh, how to operate, how to talk to demons, how to talk to the devil, how to do ceremonies, uh, even to the point of the, uh, I got married Halloween, I had a demonic wedding wow. on Halloween. On top of the, uh, that situation, I, I became the third high ranked devil worshiper in New York City. Wow. From New York City to Haiti, from Haiti to Cuba, from Cuba to Miami, and back to New York. So wow. 20, 25 years of the demonic side, actual projecting, doing witchcraft for hire, uh, making contract with diff different territory, giving familiar spirits, uh, principalities, learning how to actual project, cursing neighborhoods, but if you can curse the neighborhood, you can curse the people. Wow. So explain to um, the viewers about projecting and cursing. Uh, maybe share a little bit about whenever you went into the neighborhood in New York City and you were trying to go in there and um, project in there, but it wouldn't allow you in there. Well, so well there was a lot of neighborhoods. But one thing, one thing I share with you, uh, and, this, and this is just sharing with you from the heart, right? I mean, there was a lot of church, there was a lot of places that were mm -hmm. cursed. It was because there was no watchman on the wall. Right. The, the church wasn't ready. The church wasn't prepared. The church had no spiritual warfare. Right. The church was asleep. Right. So, but there was a remnant of a group of people that maybe at a eight time that I actually project, I got the mission accomplished for the devil. But there was a, a two percent. There were two percent of people that knew how to pray in the spirit and knew how to combat in the spirit. They wow. knew spiritual warfare in the spirit. So when I came into that region. They were in the spirit already, even though it was a, it was a spiritual thing, wasn't a physical thing. I would come into there, and it was just as, as real as the oxygen you breathe. And I would come in there, and they knew how to pray me out of the region, wow. and they knew how to shut down my assignment through powerful spiritual warfare prayers. And I uh, and I was I would come back into my body frustrated, knowing everything that happened, right. because the mission and the assignment of that night was canceled. Wow. So there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. And That's so don't give up. You keep praying. It's not what you see with the natural. It was happening in the supernatural. Because God is a supernatural God. God don't go with your feelings. God doesn't move your emotion. And God doesn't relate to your senses. Amen. So Amen. when you pray, release that. Because whatever you release, it's not going to come back void. Yeah. Yeah. So you were talking about astro projecting. So many people don't really know what that is. Yeah. Could you explain that? Yeah. See, actual projecting is something uh, Christians get messed up. Because Christians say we can see uh, actual projecting is a demonic thing. It's not a Christian thing. So sometimes Christians say, "Well, we can actually project." No, no, we we rapture. We we get caught up to rapture. <laughs> we don't have to project. Uh, so the actual projecting is basically you have a, a, a contract with a demon, and that contract with your demon that's what they call the civil court. And the civil court is not basically it's, it's a metaphor. It's not it's not a civil court. You know, it is the contract. That you have with that demon, that that demon helps you leave your body. You go on an assignment with the demon. You you whether it's cursing the neighborhood, cursing the region, cursing the church, and then you come back into your body and you fulfill the contract. You fulfill the assignment that a contract with that demon. 
is actually projecting is, is, is to contract the ceremony that I have with a particular demon that I can leave my body and come back into my body because I need, I need, I need, I need that demon, I need that demonic spirit to help me, uh, help my, my spirit to get out of my body and go to where I need to go. Wow. And I read, uh, I read uh, about how December, mm-hmm. October and December are the two most powerful months and that you're preparing in December where everyone else is doing Christmas. Yes. You're preparing to what's going to happen in January. And you were talking about 21 is the number. But the devil's number, because there's 21 roads to the dark side. There's 21 occult religion out there, which are the biggest that we give their infiltration humanity. You have Islam, right? I, I call it the way it is. I don't sugarcoat it. You got Islam. You got Buddha, right? You have, you have other occult New Age. You have these occult practices that entrap. Uh, entrap. Because if we all looking for Jesus, and man, we born with something in us yes. that we look for Jesus. People call it a higher power, but it's not a higher power. It is Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Savior, the one that created you. We're looking for him, but we look for him in the wrong places because the devil says entrapment of a cult practice, the cult religions that we fall into. And when we fall into the cult practice, these cult religions, you know, these are 21 roads to the dark side. The, the 21 roads means, means 21 means, means serpent, means python in the, in the, in the cult world, which is the same 21 roads that, that would entrap humanity to keep it away from the cross. And you fast for 21 days, which I think is interesting. The lines, you know, we do the 21 day fast for we, but we, yeah, well, the, In the book of Daniel, remember Daniel fasted for 21 days. Yes, the prince of Persia held back his blessing, but yes. God answered his prayer the first day. Yes. You know, because God never late. No. I mean, God answered his prayer the first time. day. So, That's so right. it, it is It is really the 21 days of the dark side. We So we fast for 21 days, but you know, of, what is your purpose of fasting for your 21 days? When I fast in January, it is to take back the territory, to take back the groundwork, to disperse, to dismantle, to uproot, to curse, to have the power of this Holy Spirit, to move in the spirit realm as a spiritual warfare, as a special uh, spiritual sniper for Jesus Christ. I am, I'm, I am equipped, I am and dangerous for the Lord for the rest of the year. I understand, but we, I just don't fast because I, I, I have a shopping list to Costco, so you know, that I wasn't happy. <laughs> I want a car, I want a house, I want... I want, I want to be married. I mean, uh, those things are not edifying to the body, and those things are not set to captive free, and those things just the personal shopping list that you have. That's what you'd be fasting for that, and you missed it. Yes, wow. Well, you talk about, um, in your book, you have a lot of declarations. Mm-hmm. How Explain to them, uh, our viewers, what declarations are and how important they are that we speak them out, how powerful mm-hmm. they are. Well, you can remember, right? Jesus had the actual Jesus. If you see Jesus is God and God is Jesus, I mean, yeah. let's get that straight. So we don't, you know, because Jehovah's Witnesses think that you know they think they have a different demonic theology. So, so that's another part, part of the occult practice of the twenty more rows to the dark side. So, 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 so Jesus declared things into existing. God declared. He said, "Let it be light. Let it be this." He declared. He declared. Let it be. Let it be. To separate this from that. He was declaring. We need to declare as believers because as you declare it, that you're talking into the spirit realm. When you declare to the spirit realm, it's born in the natural. Yeah. So a lot of times we don't declare anything. We don't declare, we don't speak, we don't say, we don't believe, we don't mix our faith with the word of God. We just talk, but it's empty. You got you got the pistol, but you don't know the weapons, you have the bullets in your gun. Yeah. Wow. Understand? So so if I'm declaring, I'm already believing in my heart, in my spirit, that whatever I declare and decree that heaven is already on a mission to release it because that God already put it in my spirit to declare the creed. You can remember that even Adam, Adam, even Adam, right? He named the animals. Adam wasn't that smart. God put the name, God put it in his <laughs> system to name, God put it in his heart to declare the animal, the names of the animal. See, we declare and decree these things because the Bible says that whatever you do, whatever, even when you, whatever the Bible says, even whatever you bind on earth is bind in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is lose on heaven. You declare and decree. But are you using the arsenals of heaven? To right. get your, to be on the victory side. Right. Wow. So, you talked about how our minds can be a, a fertile ground for darkness and unbelief, and that you said you had thirty seconds. That really surprised me. You have thirty seconds to cast down our thoughts and make up our minds on what we're going to believe. Can you speak to us about how important it is to take our thoughts captive and the consequences that we have? 
But the consequences is, is basically, is the 30 second, the 30 second rule that I'm talking about, what voice are you going to listen to? What voice are you going to obey? What voice are you going to submit to, right? You know, you got to change your channel of the voice. You see, the fact, people think that the battlefield is always out there, but you see in the physical, what you see what's going on in my job, what's going on in my marriage, what's going on with my children, what's going on at home, what's going on in my church. It, 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 that's just a distraction of what's going on here. Understand? Because the enemy understands that the battlefield is in the mind. The enemy understands that if I can captivate your mind, I can incarcerate your thoughts. If I can incarcerate you spiritually, I can dominate you. I can control you. So what voice are you going to submit to? If I have negative thoughts of rapping in my mind, they start to rap right now. I have to make a decision that I'm not going to cater. I'm not going to entertain. I'm not going to let that thing take root in my spirit, in my mind, in my thoughts. Because whatever I entertain in my mind, in my thought, or if I have a demonic dream, if people have a demonic dream and they go through 50 intercessors, oh, I had a demonic dream. Make me cut the rope. Cut it now in the name of Jesus. Cut it. Break it. Destroy it. Dismantle it. Because whatever you entertain, it'll steal your day. It'll steal your time. And now you just cultivated something in your mind that now it's going to come to pass. So change the channel. Wow. So you're doing a um, spiritual boot camp. Tell us what's all involved in that. Tell our viewers exactly what they can experience and expect to get out of your spiritual Well, I have a, a spiritual warfare e-course. Uh -huh. and, 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 I mean, it's just been it, it, it's something that Lord gave me in January. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that, to be honest. Because I'll be, I'll be true for Christians. I'm not going to sign up for something like that. Because Christians, <laughs> you know, they just want to lay hands on me, pray over me. And I'll be back next week to do it again. And that's just become redundant in the church today. Right. It has become redundant because you're putting your trust on man, but you're not putting your trust on the Holy Spirit. And I think, I, I, I so, so, but again, you know, you obey God, right? You do what God's going to do, regardless of the boot that sense. So I put eight weeks training on spiritual warfare, how to understand the schemes of wild, the plans of the enemy, how to break, destroy, dismantle, uproot generational curses. Because a lot of, a lot of time we talk about generational blessing, blessing but we missed it. We missed, we missed that. How did I deal with the generation of curses? How do I deal with, like, you know, my grandmother had cancer, my mama had cancer, my aunt had cancer, now the, I got cancer. How do you deal with that infirmity devil? How do you deal with that? How do you break and, and how, how you, how, God has given you a new DNA, a spiritual DNA. How do you deal with the circumstances? My father was an alcoholic, my grandfather was an alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic. How do you deal with these, with these things that are, that are circulating in your family bloodline? How do you curse it and, and get free from that? And then also, how you, how you built yourself up in the spirit, how you built yourself up as your inner man. And I'm teaching eight weeks of spiritual war, how the taxes of the devil works, the entrapment of the enemy. Because a lot of churches today say, oh, we, you, we can't talk about the devil because we glorify the devil. No, 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 you just don't know nothing about the enemy. And, and, and the fact the fact that you don't know nothing about the devil, and so how are you going to teach a church how to fight, fight spiritual warfare? Right. It's, not, it's not glorifying the devil. It's training your church to be armed and dangerous, training your church to be special ops, you know, yeah. spiritual snipers. You know, we need to go out to the battlefield. Because when, listen, when the last when the last revival come, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. People ain't coming safe. They're going to be yeah. gangbangers, prostitutes, yeah. uh, people, drug addicts are coming. I mean, it can be no sanctified people coming to your church. How do you deal with the demon? How do you deal with the residue, spiritual residue in those people? You're saved now, but you're in the game. Now you have to work out your salvation. So I, I teach eight weeks of spiritual warfare training, download a workbook, you know, and then arsenal spiritual warfare prayers that you need because the enemy understands that your spiritual warfare prayers are the things that give you the authority. You have the authority over it. They use these prayers to dismantle, to uproot, to curse and bind and loose and break yourself from these strongholds, whether it's strong in your life, strong in your mind, whether, whether it's patterns and cycles of repeat in your life. There's Christians that they love God. They, they're in love with Jesus Christ. But they go into this whole thing of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm free for six months, and then I'm back in the same situation six months later. It's like a cycle of repeat. How do you break the cycle of repeat and completely live the life that God promised you? Yes. And that's what the spiritual warfare boot camp is about. Taking it. Yes. <laughs> we're taking it. Yeah, we're taking it, you know, it for sure. Get together. Get together with a group and yes. take it. You know, yes. I mean, I'm, 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 it's not me selling something. No. You know, I mean, it's, it's me it's equipping, equipping you. Equipping it's equipping you. Equipping the equipping body you, of Christ. Giving you the wisdom. You know, listen, yes. I came for 25 years of devil worshiping. I sat with the devil for 25 years. Wow. I know the mind of the devil. I know the, I know how the devil does the schemes and wants and entrapment. I know every occult practice, how the devil infiltrates, how the devil gets into people and recruit them to the dark side, how the devil recruit people to different uh, so-called religions or whatever, how the enemy works, how how, how marine spirits work, how, how uh, uh, people, uh, 
they entertain Halloween, uh, especially Christians, which which I don't that to me mind boggling. Uh, you know, you're in bed with the devil for one day and you think it's okay. You, you, you're actually cheating on God, by the way. So you do all these things, and I'm trying to expose these things and to, to let the, the church know that the Bible says that we need to be pure. Yes. We need to be holy. We need to be holy. God, God said, you know, be holy as I'm holy. Yes. Separated from the things of the world. You've been set free from the world. Why are you still practicing the things of the world? Yes. And it's okay. Sometimes people struggle. But how do you get free from the struggles? Right. And we go to boot. Most people go to military boot camp mm -hmm. to learn how to use the weapon mm -hmm. to go to war. Right, right. And but we have weapons. We have spiritual warfare weapons. We have weapons. We have, see, the devil doesn't have. This, see, this is the thing that people don't understand. The devil doesn't have authority to a true believer. The devil has ability to trap you, but he doesn't have authority over you. God has authority over you, not the devil. We can give the devil leeway. We can give the devil access of who we are, of our identity in Christ. The devil can come, he can come, the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil come to entrap you. The devil come to distract you. The devil come to slow you up, to delay you. For the plan that God has for you, your purpose, your destiny, you're going to have to give God an account for your purpose, your destiny. God didn't save you because he had an empty, empty seat in church. Yeah. There's more to you yeah. than an empty seat in church, right? There's, there's more. There's, there's, there's a, there's, there's, God is writing your story. Yeah. Don't let the devil steal the pen. You know, one of the first places that um, the enemy comes to try to take is your identity. Mm -hmm. And so explain to the viewers, um, there's a lot of people, I know Kim and I, we do a lot of healing and deliverance and praying over people, but um, especially people that are coming off the streets and bondage or addiction, and they go back into it. And so what do you have to say to the viewer out there who was in that position where um they had a radical encounter, and um, they, you know, Jesus healed them, and then they ended up going back into that. How can they position themselves um, for someone who wants a relationship with the Lord to keep that from happening? Like, what tools can you give our audience to help them to better stand where the enemy doesn't knock them down? Kind of like in a boxing match, you know, the best time to knock somebody down is, you know, when they first get back up. So a lot of these people are just getting up on their feet, all to repeat that cycle over again. But the the, 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 the situation is, is you get, it starts in the mind. you got to make up your mind. you got to make a decision. Call out how what I'm going with Jesus. Struggle, no struggle, I'm going with Jesus. See, people say, I tried Jesus, right? And they, and they leave, or they, they're struggling. I tried Jesus, but it didn't work. No, you tried the church, you didn't try Jesus. Because yeah. you, you, when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, no matter if you smell like toast, you're still going all the way. Yeah. Right, so so the bottom line is, it's, you have to understand that whatever, whatever, whatever is trying to trap you, whatever you came out of, right? right? You have to start building your inner man. And to like when I first got, I came out of twenty-five years devil worship. I sold my soul to the devil. I did animal sacrifice. I did blood sacrifices. I did human sacrifice. I cut myself during my own blood. I, wow. I, I, I I slept in cemeteries. I, I I had human bones in my house. I had I had twenty-one rows of witchcraft in my house. I had it all. I had. And, wow. and, and then when I came out of that, you don't see me going back and say, well, I can't go back. I can't yeah. wait to go back next week because I, I want to cut myself. I want to drink human blood or I want to drink animal blood. Well, I can't go back to myself because, you know, they're having a demon party and I'm, I can't wait to get there. I'm going to be the first one there. I don't, I'm not into that. Yeah. I, the, the door's shut yeah. because you have to build your relationship with the Lord. Yes. You know, you have to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. You have to fill yourself with the Word of God. You have to increase your faith. So this is so important to me. This is so real to me that I don't need this thing. Right. Understand? Right. Yeah. Because the stronger this get, yeah. the stronger I get with Jesus, the weaker this becomes. Mm -hmm. The right. higher I go with Jesus, the more this stuff disappears. There's people today that they're looking more to the rear mirror, which is a smaller mirror, yeah. than the big windshield in front yeah. of Yeah, that's a good point. And I think what you're talking about is the ones who stop at salvation. They receive salvation and then they just stop there. They don't continue that journey, filling themselves up and using the opportunities that the Lord puts in our path even trials to strengthen our Well, in discipleship, up. I mean discipleship, yes. you know, build your foundation, build your yes. foundation with God, whether it's home, reading the Bible, you know, starting the New Testament, don't run into the Old Testament, it's a little complicated, but start in the New yes. Testament, get into discipleship, find a Bible-believing church. Yes. I mean, I know it's hard to find these days because we got New Age Church, but we need yes. to find a Bible-believing church, amen, because the pastors today, they're just preaching garbage, Yeah. you know, because they're preaching to the people, but they don't hear Jesus preaching to them anymore. 
You know, so we need to find a real Bible believing church. If, whether you, if you need me, if you have to eat online and you there's no there's no one in your local community, you gotta eat spiritually. Yes. You gotta eat spiritually. You have to cultivate that relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. Some people know the voice of their friendships, their husband, wife, and they don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. And there's one thing about the devil. One thing the devil, the game of the devil, he knows how to make me. He knows how to mimic voices. That's why there's familiar spirits. That's that the good. people do tarot cards. Yes. Right? When they do tarot cards and you go there and then, then you got this the lady, she called medium, and she goes, she sounds just like your mama. I mean her voice sounds just like your mama because the enemy and those familiar spirits know how to they know how to mimic the mama your voice or your mama. And you think wow. that you're talking to your mama and you ain't talking to your mama because if your mama is a Christian and she passed away, she's having such a good time with Jesus in heaven, she don't want to talk to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? So yeah. so that is a familiar spirit. That is yeah. a demon. You're making a contract. You're giving it legal rights. Now you open yourself up in the spirit for all the, all the tragedy things to come. Wow. Uh, um, you talked in your book about the spirit of hindrance and how it has crippled the church. How do we combat well, you know, it's it, 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 the spirit of hindrance is it, disobedient to the Holy Spirit. Because it, the only thing, if I obey the Holy Spirit, it's not going to hinder me. If I if I submit to the Holy Spirit, nothing's going to hinder me. If I'm teachable to the Holy Spirit, nothing's going to hinder me. Now, when I become arrogant, I become I become prideful. It's a spirit of hindrance because now I think I know more than God. Now I think I'm, I'm, I'm more smarter than the Holy Spirit. Now I'm gonna let, I'm gonna do it my way, and and, and my way is not gonna work. You know, my way is not going to work. So, 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 this for the hindrance. Now, you know, the devil try to throw our fiery darts of hindrance. And that's a different story. Fiery darts of hindrance to stop you, to slow you up, to delay you, you know. But do I submit? Do, do I open the doors to those things? You know, do I open the doors to things? See, one of the things that we need to understand, and I shared them with the audience, man, if you're going to learn anything today, pray. Lord, give me sure. discernment. Sure. Give me discernment. I need discernment to see what's from you, what's you, and what is not you. Because there's a lot of things out there that have the form of balance, but denying the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're denying the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because if you know Jesus Christ and you know the finished work of the cross, and then there's nothing that can cover, there's nothing that's going to pull the wool over your eyes. Amen? Spiritually. Amen. That you will understand. And there will be no delay. There will be no hindrance. You'll be walking with God one step at a time, one day at a time, to get to the finish line. So good. Well, you share in your book, um, when you were radically saved by the Lord and you turned you turned your life around and you were walking with the Lord, the enemy came at you fiercely, like you were overcome with fear. Can you share with our viewers about that time mm -hmm. and um, what what I know Jesus rose up in you, but share how you were able to conquer that because it was such a um, it seems like it was such a, a stronghold of a time for you to Get past. Well, it, it, it was a season. It was a dark season. It was a tormenting season. Yeah. It was a it was a, a, a fearful season that yes. I came across, yes. right? Because the, the, the situation was, I leave. I mean, I let twenty five years the devil worship me. I mean, I even got the marks here. You know, I sold my soul to the devil. You see my oh, marks here. Wow. You see my marks yes. right there. I sold my soul to the devil. I was. I got the cross upside down here, it caught into my flesh. You know, with, with the sermon that was done. So, so what I'm saying, with you coming out of that. And thinking that, the, that, that they were not going to come, that the warlocks and the witches were never going to prepare their arsenal, the money arsenal, to kill me because I know the secrets of the dark kingdom of darkness and how they, and how they recruit and how they, they infiltrate a culture and how they do witchcraft to people and how they uh, do ceremonies, you know, and how they you know, color you happy to make you believe that this is, this is from God. I understand how they entrap you and I know all these things and now they say, well, we need to get rid of him now. You know, he's no yeah. longer, you know, he's no longer with us anymore. So they send demons and warlock and they send demonic spirits into my house. And so I would sleep during the day and stay up at night because they will, the tormentors would come to torment me, to try to rip my body apart, to try to rip my soul out of my body. They would choke me. I would go, my blood would go cold. I would, now I'm a young Christian. I've been a Christian only for a few months. I'm trying to like, I didn't know what spiritual warfare was. I mean, I know what spiritual warfare was in the demonic, yeah. you know, but I didn't know spiritual warfare in Jesus yeah. because my church was not teaching that. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to. I didn't even know how to fast. I didn't know what the word fast. I didn't. Even, I didn't have no clue. But you see, you see, I, I, I started. I, you know, when they grab me by my neck and try to choke me, and my blood go crow, and I can't scream Jesus. I can't even scream because I feel like uh, someone is holding my mouth. Oh. I, I was going through all these things. Jezebel would come into my room, lay in my bed. Uh, you could feel the bed go down. You could feel the room go ice cold, and you could hear the footsteps on the hallway when they were coming. 
you can hear it and your and your hairs get up and all this stuff for 30 days of that torment i mean to the point that i thought i was going to lose my mind and, wow. and and it came and all that was happening you know day after night night after night night after night and one day it stopped wow. after 30 days and the lord got rid of it uh, and the lord took care of it and and this i'm like I'm, this i'm a big christian and i still got the victory wow. i mean to the point that you know i i i, I suffer for a while but God gave me the victory, and now that I, now that the Lord has blessed me, but because you know, before you came from the dark side, and that's what, yes, I, I, I have, I have some, maybe I have some leverage in the church because I came from there. I lived there for 25 years, so I have some leverage. But my spiritual warfare was been taught by sitting in the feet of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, is there any time where Satan, an enemy, tries to come at you? I like get it all. Day, I get it all day. I get it. Every, uh, the other yeah. day, we just said we were doing a video uh, for, him, for Pastor Juan Martinez. You'd be talking to him in a little while. We were doing a video for Pastor Juan Martinez, and the first person that showed up was a sickness on uh, wow. on YouTube. He said, John Ramirez, I'm still coming after you. Wow. A sickness. Wow. Uh, or sickness. He said, I'm <laughs> still coming after you. They wow. dare mess with you after. Yeah, yeah, after. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, still, I still get, you know, because I, I believe in my heart that if you call for spiritual warfare, you can't get comfortable. No. You know, you can't get, if, if you call, and listen, if you're a Christian, if you say you're a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, not a Christian Dior, a, a real follower of Christ. Yes. And man, that you saw died, you got a bullseye on you. Yeah. And man, the devil's going to come after you. The Bible says that there, there's no weapon formed against you. Yes, the devil's going to form a weapon. Yes, the devil's going to come after you. But the Bible makes it clear, no weapon formed against you will prosper. But you got to do your part. Understand, you got to do your part. You got to, you know, you got to be, you got to be an arrow of God's quiver. Understand, you got to do your part. Spiritual warfare, listen, the Christian walk is a spiritual warfare walk. Yeah. Even Paul, at the end of his life, he said, I fought the good fight. Yeah. He said, I had it easy. I was a secret friendly church. You know, I had uh, peppermint. Uh, I had bonbons with Jesus up in heaven. And Paul said, I fought the good fight. I mean, look at Paul's resume. Yes, he was. He's a great example. Man, a spiritual warfare. Yeah, he, he, you know, he yes. said, I was crushed from every side, but I wasn't destroyed. That's right. I mean, Paul said, look at my resume, I was shipwrecked, I went this, I took, I bet the monks of Jesus, I went to this, I went to that, I was stoned outside of the city, uh, left for dead. I think Paul was dead when they stoned him, I think God just resurrected him. Oh, I believe I, that you too. You know, I believe that too. Yeah. So all, look at the resume of Paul, look at the resume of the church in China, look at the resume of the church in India, the hostile places that our brothers and sisters that are going to the test. Don't you think you're going to be tested? Yes. Yes. We are really big on testimony. Yeah. I love the testimony of your brother, Jim. Mm-hmm. Could you share that? Yeah, my, my brother Jimmy was uh, my 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 other my other brother, and my brother Jimmy was also a spiritual. He was into a uh, demonic the demonic uh, uh, church show. He was in the demonic church. He was uh, being groomed too to be a, a warlock. But my brother Jimmy was a transvestite. He was homosexual. He was bisexual. He was a witch doctor, and he was married to a regular woman. And man, it was I mean Thanksgiving in my mother's house was the prettiest <laughs> Thanksgiving ever. Can I imagine? Because I would go there and. As a young Christian, and he would say Jesus homosexual. He would say the real, real uh, things that were out there about Jesus. So me, as a young Christian, you know, I, I ran, I ran on emotions and feelings. I didn't, I wasn't really stable with the Holy Spirit at the time. So I thought, you know, going across the table and and punching my brother that was that was that was uh, I'm do, I was doing God. I was defending Jesus. I was doing, and and it came to a point that one day, my brother, uh, years later. My brother caught a heart attack because my brother would, my brother would use, uh, my brother was, uh, you know, he had substance abuse, and one day he caught a heart attack, and uh, I went, and I was, the Lord should go to the hospital because my brother's gonna have heart surgery, and I said I'm not going there because my brother had, he made his his people, but made Sodom and Gomorrah look like kindergarten. Wow. I mean, crazy people. I mean, he had all kind of people. I mean, we talking about misfits, like you wouldn't believe. And uh, I said I'm not going to the hospital. I'm not going. I said Lord, I'm not going. Make a long story short, uh, Lord said, you go and speak to him about me. And the day I went to the hospital, it was because I thought it was, he was going to have all these crazy people there, and I was going to walk into like the line and then like like then, right? <laughs> so so, but I, that's why I, I can't imagine. Yeah. So I said I have to deal with him, and they're going to have like ten people in there. So I have to. So it's eleven against one. <laughs> so so I was like sizing up the fight. So uh, but my brother was there by himself, and I shared the gospel. My brother cried. He received Jesus before he went, and my brother left homosexuality. Was the, he left transvestite. He left all these uh, ungodly practices, and he got baptized. He went to church, and a year before, his, a week before his birthday, 
he went home with Jesus Christ. Wow. And I did my brother's funeral. And it's amazing because my brother was going to do a party, right? My yeah. brother said, I'm going to do a Christian party. But they didn't know the people that were coming. Well, Salam and Gamora got invited to the party, but they didn't know that there was, was going to be one of these parties. There was going to be cocaine, liquor. You know, we would hang out for three days nonstop. Got to get coked up, get liquor, get, you know, get crazy, get radical. They, they, they thought they were coming to this party. And my brother said, I'm going to do a Christian party. I'm going to put high grade. It's our God. <laughs> you can only imagine. They know. What so, were they yeah, were coming so, yeah, to? Yeah, they were walk, but my brother went home with the Lord and wow. a week before his wow. birthday. So there was no party. But, you know, God God works in mysterious ways, right? So yeah. God did my brother's party at his funeral. And those people came yeah, anyway. Yeah. Those people came anyway. And it was like, see, it was like this. And this was full of rolling. Like, I mean, we didn't know who was a woman. We didn't know who was a man. <laughs> It was really, we didn't know. There was a woman there. There was a woman there that looked like man. They probably can bench trust me. You know, it was ferocious. And But the Holy Spirit showed up. Wow. And I preached the gospel. And they heard the gospel because I was the only Bible that they were going to see that day. Wow. And I preached the gospel. And when I preached the gospel, 18 people of those people raised their hand and said, I wanted Jesus. You wow. see? So the party was good anyway. I just picture, I love that part where you're talking about in the book where you're fighting over Thanksgiving and then your mom said that y'all had to come at different times. Yes, my mom had to come. My mom had to come. You're you, like, no more of this. Yeah, you come a couple hours before you eat quick and you get out and then the next person comes. So my oh, mom had to tolerate the I situation. I can only imagine. So I'm curious that whenever you turned your life um, around and were radically saved, what is your family? How did you, how did they deal with that? What did they think about it? Did they? They thought it was a phase. They thought I was like, <laughs> they thought I lost my mind. They were like, oh, he'd be, you know, in the witchcraft people, they have bets. Yeah. Bets, oh, he'd be back, oh. he'd be back in 30 days. Oh, we'll, wow. bet, we'll bet $100. Uh -huh. I bet you 50 He'll be back. And uh, I don't know who won the bet because I never went back. Wow. I've been serving Jesus now for 21 years. And what did they think of that? Uh, now that it's, now that you haven't gone back and they know this is truly the way. I, you know, the, 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 the thing is that I have, I have gone and share the gospel with the, the warlocks and the witches. One day, I, I one day, they, and this, is, this is a crazy moment. I'm to share this real quick. No, go ahead. One day, I, I, I shared this crazy moment. As a young Christian, I, I was very sold out. I was radically changed. I mean, I had an encounter with the cross. I, in hell, I left my body and went to hell by 1999 October. I, I left my body and went to hell. The cross of Jesus Christ showed up in hell, and that's how I got saved. I came back into my body. I went to hell as a, as a satanic third high rank that were worshiper in New York City. Wow. Came back as a believer in Christ. So, and you know, when you walk the portals of hell, when you get to hell, when, when you get to hell, when you walk the when you walk the, the portals of hell, I can call it a portal because it was like tunnels. When you walk, when you get, when you end up in hell, the ground breaks like a human person. Oh. And hell, when you step on the ground, hell breaks. So, so all, all came back into my body, radically changed, and uh, even my family they were whispering like, oh, you know, he's just he's just going through a crazy moment. You know, they were like whispering. He'll be back, you know. He'll be back, you know, doing the witchcraft stuff. Because I was born into witchcraft at the age of eight, you know, and in the age of seven, seven, seven and a half, I was in, a, in I was in the South Bronx. I grew up in the South Bronx, and there was uh, a lot of abandoned buildings in the seventies. And I was in, a, I was in a, a, a building. I was in a lot that you know, the building came down, all that stuff. Right, the building came down, and uh, I was hanging out with the, the bully of the neighborhood, We're hanging out, and this necklace fell from the second heaven. It had seven colors, seven the seven. It had the seven colors of the dark side. Um, so the necklace fell. From, I was recruited, really recruited first from the second heaven with the principality. The necklace fell, hit the ground. It was like a Native American Indian necklace. It had seven colors, seven colors of dark side. It's for the set the set the potencia, set the seven powers of the dark side. The necklace fell, and I saw the necklace fell right like on my feet. I grabbed the necklace, and, it, and there was no way someone threw it out the window because the building was demolished. Wow. So it fell, I grabbed the necklace and I heard the voice of my mother saying, calling me, I'm mimicking my mother's voice. But now I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, now you gotta remember this, I'm in the lot. For me to hear my mom's voice, my mom, could, she could have had the biggest microphone or the biggest loudspeaker and I could still hear her voice. It was the demon mimicking the voice. Right. So I took the necklace, I put it in my pocket, I told the bully guy, I said, my mom, call me, I gotta go. So when I went, I, I took off, I ran. I got to then in front of my building. It took like 10 minutes to get to in front of my building. So how could my mom hear that voice right. 10 minutes away right. from where I was at? Right. Hear my mom's voice like she was standing next to me. Wow. So I ran. And then I took the necklace and I put it on around my neck and I kept it. So once I put it on my I 
it changed my identity. That's why I tell people on Halloween, why would you dress your kid up in Halloween when Halloween is the devil's holiday, yeah. is the devil's birthday, so to speak. He celebrates Halloween, October the witchcraft one. You dress your kid like, oh, I'm not dressing my kid like a witch, I'm not dressing my kid like a demon, but you're, oh, I'm dressing my kid like a little mermaid, right? But it's a merry spirit. Wow. So you're dressing your kid, you're changing your identity, now you're telling the devil, now you got legal rights over my child. So when your child grows up in church and your child becomes a teenager and he gets on drugs, the devil came and collected and you wonder why my child is so messed up when he was going to Sunday school. Wow. But it was the door that you opened when you dressed him up and you put him and you put him in the altar of Baal spiritually. And you told the devil, now you can have real estate rights over my child. Yeah. And you never, the doors is never renounced, it was never closed. Now the devil come back or he take your daughter and makes her a prostitute or makes her a, a stripper. Right? Let's be real. Yeah. Because the devil yeah. plays for keeps. I, I, I believe it. And I, I don't think I don't think Christians realize um, the Halloween. The the, the consequences, right? Yes, the they don't realize that we sometimes we open the door but, and but let this the is enemy the key get is, in. The, key, the people say it's only one night. It's only one night. It's only one. Yeah. one situation. God understands. It's only one night. Yeah. You know. He knows my heart. Yeah, he knows my heart. Yeah. He knows how He you. knows my heart. But meanwhile, yeah. actually, Esau, Esau did one mistake. One mistake, so yep. his birthright. He did. Adam did one mistake, lost the condom. Yep. Right? Yep. Lost God and Eve. Lost the best thing in God. The yeah, best part did. of the earth, he lost it. Yep. One, 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 one situation, he lost it. Yep. So what is it? There, there's people in jail right now. They lost the temple once. Yep. And they're doing life in prison. Wow. That's a very good point. Right? So yeah. they, one night they lost their temper, and now they're doing life in prison. So so what? why, why would you put, why would you do something? And make God jealous. Yeah. What would you do something? And it's like the movie Indecent Proposal, right? Yeah. It came yes. out in the eighties, right? Yeah. The man said, "Let me stay. Let me. Let me. Let me uh, spend one night with your wife, and I give you a million dollars, right? Wow. And, and destroy his marriage in the movie, right? Yeah. So whatever you do one night, even 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 Anton Levay, which is uh, the, he the one that created, uh, he the one that came with the Satanic book. He's the one that actually had the Church of Satan in California. He said, I think every Christian parent, that at least one day of the year, you're allowed to celebrate the devil mm-hmm. with your children. Wow. Come out of his mouth. No one else's. And his testimony, his testimony, his deathbed, Jesus showed up and he said, oh my God, it's you. Never repented. Wow. So, 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 I, what are the consequences? What are the implications? You know, either you're holy, you walk with God. You know, not, no one is perfect. But you, what is your, how genuine are you? And they think it's such an innocent holiday. No. I mean, I have to admit, we did growing up. Yeah, I mean, I did the Halloween growing up. Yeah, I got, I got married Halloween. It's so innocent, but it's right. such a sneaky way yeah. for the enemy Yeah, but that, that's what the devil does. Yeah. The devil knows. The devil knows how to sugarcoat things. He, the devil knows how to smoke the you know, smoking mirrors. The devil knows how to introduce you to something. It's like the drug dealer. Hey, take the drug. You're gonna be the life of the party. But he, he, the devil, the, the drug dealer never tells you. That you can overdose. The devil, the devil never tells you. The drug dealer never tells you. If you don't pay me, I'm gonna come beat you up. No, none of that. So, 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 what is what what is it that that, that, that you don't have in Christ that you gotta go chase the devil for? Wow. You were saying you were talking about you were dealing with a bully, but in your book you talk about the the bully of the schoolyard. So uh, that's the devil. That's a metaphor. Right. The devil, the bully in the schoolyard. So how do we con- how do you Want to tell our viewers how do you confront that bully? What, what is your schoolyard? What is your, what is what is your schoolyard, right? What is your spiritual schoolyard? What is it that the, the devil? That what, how, how the devil is picking on you? Is it generational? He's picking on you. Is it the bully's picking on you because you open a door? You give him legal rights. You give him legal assets of your life. Is it is, is it got hindering, delay blockages? What is your dis- delay blockages, distraction that the devil has a stronghold on you? What is the bully? Because the devil is a bully. Absolutely. The devil's a bully. Yeah. The devil understands that he can't. The devil understands that he can't take nothing from you, but he try to bully you. Mm-hmm. Understand? Yeah. Spiritually bully. Yeah. So how do you deal with the bully in the schoolyard? Yeah. Right. I deal with the bully in the schoolyard by first identifying, identifying in the spirit what the devil is trying to get at me, or what he's trying to come at me, or what he has on me, and then I deal with the situation through the Holy Spirit. I deal with the situation through the Holy Spirit, but also spiritual warfare. And also, whatever it is, if it's pornographic, say you put on pornography, you know, how you renounce that stuff. Take your laptop, send it on vacation. <laughs> put it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> put it on the Hallmark 
channel. Yeah, for the homo channel. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that anymore. And then, anymore. then, and then, you, <laughs> then, <laughs> then you, you, you want to make the devil angry? Um, you want to make the devil angry? You take home, you take your laptop, you sell it, and then you take that money and you give it to the church. Wow. There you go. And you yeah. say, shame the devil. Amen. And then later on, when you when God sets you free, you become strong. You then you put God will bless you with a better laptop. Yeah. But you have to get rid of the cancer. And that put yourself in the position. Right. What, what would you con put to continue to stay in your shoes? It's like saying, I have even dreams. I have I have dreams, right? I, at times I get dreams that, that I'm in a demonic party. Wow. But I come out preaching Jesus. And even in my dream, I preach Jesus in a yeah. demonic <laughs> party. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> even, even in my dream, they get some little John, welcome to the party. We want to do something. We'll do a cleansing. See, they're never trying to trap me in my dreams, you know, yes. to do a ceremony so yes. I can be weakened. So if yes. I be weakened, I can be tempted. And I can be yes. tempted. And then I can, I can start leaning to the dark side here, yes. you know, res and resell my soul to the dark side. And first of all, for all the people that are listening, let me let me just give you something. You can't sell something. You don't have the deed or you can't, when the devil's, you see all these music people and all these uh, movie stars, I sold my soul to the devil. You ain't sold nothing because it doesn't belong to you. The, the devil lied to you. The devil entrapped you. The devil made you believe you drank the Kool-Aid. You can't sell your soul. You can't sell your spirit. It doesn't belong to you anyway. You don't have the title of your soul. God does. But the devil makes you believe that you sold your soul. So you think that you can't get something back and then you can't run to Christ. That's right. Even the Bible says that uh, there's God always leads us the way of our temptation. Yeah, and then and then the, the situation. But this is the Bible says. The Bible says the point of memory and dies is the judgment, absent from the body, present, yeah. present what? The, the Lord. Lord. So the who Lord. owns your soul? Yeah. Who who you have to give an account? You have right. your soul has to give an account. It, it doesn't absent from the body go go to go to the devil. No, no, not at all. See how the devil would brainwash you to make you believe he'll give you a few extra cookies. You sell your soul. They give you free extra movie deals, yeah. movie co record contracts. Yeah. They give you anything you want, and know that he can keep you away from the cross. Yeah. If he can't come in the door, he comes in the in the window, and yeah. he'll come in in a crack. He's yeah. very, very yeah. sneaky, yeah. and he has no new tactics. No, no new he, tactics. He, he, the devil has all tactics. But if you're not, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not wise to the schemes and the wiles of the enemy. Will pull the wool over your eyes. And yeah. Thank God for the discernment. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God, you know, and, and thank God that God has equipped us yes. to understand the things of the supernatural. Yes. And God is a supernatural God. We got to walk in the supernatural and be the church of Jesus Christ. Right. Well, I have one more question um, about the church. And we talked a little bit about before we went on air about where the church is and what they're preaching and teaching and in this time and i i want you to share t with our viewers um what we need to look for in a church so that we're equipped um for those that are not in church for um, those that are looking for a church home or maybe you feel ill-equipped you're not prepared um, for the times that we're about to walk in can you share with the viewers what to look for um, either within their church or a church that a church home in, in this season and time? You know, what, what, one thing I say, first, first of all, you got to find out if the Holy Spirit is in the church. Right. Right? Because when I walk into my church, Times Square Church, I feel the presence of God in the church. The second thing, if the Holy Spirit is in the church, that's one thing. If the Holy Spirit is there, I don't want to be there. Amen. Because right. it's gonna be inventions of man. It's gonna be it's gonna be new age teaching. It's right. gonna be a form of God and denying the power. If the second thing is, you know, first of all, you need to feel the presence of God, not your emotional self. The presence of God there. Second of all, are they teaching and preaching the word of God? Mm -hmm. Understand? Right. Because if they're preaching the word of God, the word of God will convict you. Yes. Understand? If yes. you don't feel no conviction, you're sitting there too comfortable, and you're living in your sin, and you're living in besetting sin, and you're not being challenged. By the word of God that's being preached, you're not being you're not, it, 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 you're not being convicted, and then there's no Holy Spirit there, and then there's no word of God there, and you're sitting in the wrong place. Right. Understand? Right. Right. And if you're in a spiritual warfare battle, can I just say something? Yes, go Four ahead. weapons that you need if you're in a spiritual warfare battle. First, the word of God. Second, faith. That's it. Spiritual strength. Spiritual endurance. Because you don't know how long the fight going to be. Yes, that's true. Understand? That's these are the true. things that we need. And these are the things that I share with the, with, with the audience to understand. That if, if, if I go somewhere and I sit there and the word and I feel like if the word is not convicting me, understand that I means the word is not being preached. Right. So understand? important. Yes. It's so important because so the conviction important. is what gets you to maturity. The conviction is what gets you closer to God. The conviction it will make.
makes you grow in the things of God. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are amazing things we need to look for. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time Thank here. You we want to yes. share with the viewers the two books. Yes. Um, There's Destroying Fear, Strategies to Overthrow the Enemy's Tactics. This is so amazing. It has so many amazing. tools. And then Armed and Dangerous. Yes. That's the offense. That's See, the big, stay on the offense. I have another book called Unmasking the Devil, right? That's defense. A lot of Christians, we stay too long in the defense and we get beat up too much spiritually. You know, we need offense. You know, so we need good. the offense. We need to know. We need to know how to attack the enemy, destroy the patterns and cycles of repeat, or destroying the stronghold, buying the strong man. We need to do that. Offense is important because we stay too long in the defense. We get beat up spiritually. We lose ground right. spiritually. Right. We need to know how to fight back, take the ground, and become victorious. Well, that's awesome, and you can um, get John's books on his website, and we're going to post at the end of this porch talk all of his links where you can get his spiritual boot camp and his two books. And we are excited Amen. to be going to his conference tonight where we're going to get equipped. Yeah. So Amen. Kim and I are so excited about spending time Amen. with thank John so tonight. Much. Yes, thank, thank you so much for joining us. It was, it was a pleasure for us. Yes. So now we're going to trade <laughs> seats and yes. we're going to have Juan Martinez yes. come sit with us. He yes. is been, amazing. Come on over here. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Yes. So glad to so have you on here. You're so good. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Guys you. Are awesome at the porch. We, we, <laughs> we are doing what we we're doing with what we got, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our audience has been faithful with <laughs> us yeah. in our technical difficulties, but you know what? Uh, you have to do it scared. We, that's right. That's right. It's we, a good thing. That's we right. Money. It is. And so Juan Martinez is with Get Rap Church mm -hmm. here in Spring, Texas. And Juan, you have another location in Houston. Um, Southeast Gal campus, yeah. Okay. Road. So tell us a little bit about Get Rap Church when Get Rap started and mm. give a testimony. Give our viewers your testimony. personal testimony. Ooh, man, yeah. Get Rap. So when Get Rap started, I was actually, to, to go back when it started, I was sitting in a prison cell. Wow. And I did not know what revival meant, but I heard in my spirit that I would be a part of, of some type of revival. And so I didn't get it. I just wrote it down on this Bible that I was reading, you know, and it was uh, pages have fallen apart, been locked up for some years. And I wrote that down and wrote out, wrote out the word I heard in my spirit wrapped in the love of Christ. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, time would pass. Right, because a lot of times we think that God gives you a word and then it happens tomorrow. Oh, well, yeah. that's not. We, we not know that happens. doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. <laughs> so time passed. Even though I truly believe that every single thing, from a certain moment when I said yes to Jesus, was all a process. Uh, for you know, all of that had to happen. Every single part. Sometimes we we disregard this part or disregard this part. No, every single part is important because it's a process. And so you can't despise the small beginning, right? When you wrote it down. And as time went on, um, I, uh, you know, when I get out, I, I, you know, Jonah got spit out of the mouth of the whale. I got spit out of the mouth of the jail. And so I, I just did, you know, it was crazy because pastors sometimes would look at me like I was nuts. You know, some of you, uh, you know, asked for forgiveness, you know, because they thought I was crazy <laughs> because I'm like, I'm going to go back and we're going to do this. And I'm sending, because I'm thinking you read the Bible. And then you just do what the Bible says. Right. So when I get out, I'm like, we gotta go, we gotta go do this. Yeah. Right? I didn't think like, you know, you just you get saved and you go to church. I thought you get saved, you know, church is a part of it, but we gotta go out there. You know, there's people dying. Oh, so, so you already you skipped a step, you already knew. Most people don't go. Oh they no. Stay. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm thinking what they did in the Bible. It's is you what we have to do. Yeah. So I'm sending up. At those times I was sending, now I was able to be in some rooms with some of these people, but at those times I didn't know anybody. And I would send emails to like Kim Walker. And, you know, then the ministry would happen, right? Where they would send me a thing and I got to fill it out. And I'm like, what is this? Because again, I was clueless on any, on every and anything. Out here. I just thought I got saved. I got to go back to the people, right? Moses, you know, there was a plan with Moses, right? So Moses... He, he gets put in the basket, and you think, oh, it was only the basket. Uh, the children, God's people are asking God to get him out of this place. You know, we call it Egypt, or it can be drug addiction, it can be whatever. He couldn't even speak to them. He went and spoke to someone else that he had prepared, right? He had him living in a palace just so that he wouldn't have a slave mentality. 
because he would, can't talk to a slave because a slave would, he just reverts back to the foolishness, right? They're right. slave minded. Right. So you just, as a dog returns to his vomit, right? So they wouldn't have received the word. He had to go to somebody who had some palace thinking and then remind them of who he was so that he could go back. And I feel like that's Christianity, right? And so that's kind of what happened in my life. And so I come out, and the funny thing, get wrapped, is because I started typing one day, wrapped in the love of Christ.org. And I said, God, that is so long. Nobody's going to want to go to the website. I'm like, that's like 50 miles long. And how could you put that on the church? He said, the, the church name is going to be Get Wrapped. And so, uh, so it's cool because when people go get wrapped, they think it's tacos or they think it's, you know, when you put get wrapped on, online, you get a bunch of overweight people with the wrap, you know, and so we're the only get wrapped church on the planet. Um, there's no other get wrapped, you know, so it makes us kind of unique. And when people say get wrapped, we get to present them with the love of Christ, you know, because usually they got to ask, you know, you just can't invade someone's world. They don't want to know. But when they ask what's get wrapped, I feel like I have full authority to explain to them what they want to know. So they got kind of bamboozled into the into the gospel. How long were you in prison for? Just curious. Well, in my life, about ten years. Oh, okay. This last time, four years, okay. facing a twenty-five year sentence. Oh wow! When I, I jumped on a Greyhound bus, you know, the, everything's flipped. The enemy has perverted everything. So I had a form of faith, mm -hmm. and 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 even though the enemy thought he won, God took the, that faith mm -hmm. and is using it for his good. So I I'm just foolish enough to believe what the Bible says. You know, and I don't know if we would call it a fool, but I just, I don't know. I read it and I believe it. And so, you know, we have terms here where we say, that's crazy. And the whole church yells, no, that's God. Because, yeah. I, I mean, like we, we, most of the time we would think it's crazy. Well, it should kind of. And, you know, you got people, you know, struggling with, with little beliefs like gas money or stuff like that. But the reality is if you believe in a God who parted seas and resurrected somebody from the dead, then you have to ask yourself, you know, is the other, you know, could this happen? Could he do that? Sure, of course he can. If he can part seas, he can do anything. Wow. You know? It says all, all things. Are all things. things. All, all things. things are we have a all big things. God. A Fact. big God. <laughs> faith, <laughs> faith is limitless. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, There's and limitless. I know nothing. No limitation. I've, I've realized, you know, people are like, well, how do you, you know, because they ask you the questions. And I guess I try to go back and look at the road I've walked to kind of give people some type of God. God is God. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. He's perfect. If he played baseball, he'd hit a home run every time. Could you imagine <laughs> Jesus on your team? He'd never strike out. You know? yeah, He's yeah. perfect. That's um, right. And, uh, you know, we, we I, I know nothing and he knows everything. Yeah, that's awesome. That's kind of how I've still been living my life. No long, no, it doesn't matter how many books, it doesn't matter what television appearance. I know nothing. He knows everything. I used to think I was dumb, but then the book of James tells me that if I need wisdom, all I have to do is ask him and he gives it all to that's me, right? right? That's and right. so I realized by default I'm a genius. <laughs> there you because go. if he knows everything, then I, I can't be stupid. You that's know, right. I, I know I'm that's pretty right. I'm connected. Now, how, long, how many years has it been since you've been saved? Uh, I got saved in 2008. Okay. So 12 wow. years. Mm -hmm. so good. 12 years. And in 12 years, I mean, I don't know, we started a Bible study uh, that, you know, one day there was like 130 people and we, we were like, I think we have a church. So I started calling people and go, yo, I think I'm a pastor. Wow. And so I, I had, you know, I, I don't know the stuff. I just know that I'm God in the Bible. put you right in that role. Yeah, I had studied for about four years. You know, I did a lot of studying, reading the Bible, and, you know, just led by the Spirit of God. And so every journey has been just a step led by the Spirit of God. Obviously, I've met uh, John. I call him my older brother, you know. He's my older brother. And so uh, he, he's just an incredible man of God, and he's just been in my life. And um, throughout time, man, and he just keeps wowing me. You know, we're just not scared of doing stuff. We planted a, the Southeast Campus during Corona. You know, we, wow. we, you know, the time where everybody's like, shut down, we're like, we're going to plant a church. Only in God can you do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny to me. Yep. Because I'm thinking, when I was in darkness and I was suddenly, I told you, but look, I jumped on a Greyhound bus. I knew nobody in Texas. I had just watched enough movies and had enough faith wow. and belief wow. that the enemy could do these things for me. Yeah, Even though I didn't accredit them to the enemy. Yeah. I didn't accredit them to the yeah. enemy. I actually thought I was getting to heaven. Yeah. Selling drugs all around the planet. I thought I was going to heaven. Because I knew the Our Father. <laughs> Our Father born in heaven in two languages. Padre Nuestro Cotero Cielo. You know, I knew both. <laughs> and as long as I did the Our Father, I thought, I'm heaven bound. You know, it, it, uh, I was in the Bible Belt, Texas, for about 10 years. And I looked the drug dealer part. And not one Christian ever presented the gospel to me. I need you to think about it. Nobody okay. has time anyway. Everybody yeah. just goes to church. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. 
but but nobody came. You know who told me I was going to hell? The guy I was picking up drugs from one day. He said, "You know you're going to hell." True story. He goes, "You know you're going to hell." It was the drug dealer that told me I was going. And to you hell. were like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, "I'm not going to hell." You know what I told him? <laughs> I know who your father. <laughs> I go, I'm not going to hell. I know who your father. What are you talking about? I'll pray. He's so, like, "Bro, you're selling. You're destroying lives." I said, nah, "What?" I said, "It ain't." I'm like a doctor. I just medicate people. It's no different. I bring joy to people. I said, I bring, I make people happy. Mm. Wow. I take them out of their troubles. Wow. That's how I really thought. Wow. That's, that's amazing that yeah. no one. What an amazing journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, think about it. You know what I like asking people? I usually say to people, hey, uh, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to walk around. And, and here, I'm going to challenge y'all. And challenge y'all. Yeah. So yeah, I, I say, love challenges. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the charge. You hear okay. it in the Bible all the time, yeah. right? The charge. Well, yeah. I'm going to give you a charge. All right. I want you to walk around, not because there's a uh, an event, not because you know church event or something like that. Just on a regular basis, I want you to walk around. I want you to tell me how many people you see praying for somebody else. Okay. Now, when it takes you years, because I've told some people and they still haven't called me. Oh. And I say the second question is, are you part of the problem? Because you could go all day today. Go ahead, try it out today. Yeah. And tell me how many people. Now, you'll see somebody smoking a cigarette. You'll see somebody getting yelled at, probably. You know, you'll see all everything. But you will not see someone in a Walmart or somebody just at the yeah. subway. Or just in your day, you don't really see, yeah. see people. Nobody has time to stop. That I've said that. Yeah. I had a conversation well, recently that, you know, they were talking about fear. They were succumbed by fear. And I literally said, but what are you doing about it? You know, instead of talking about it, instead of doing something, instead of decreeing and declaring mm. and taking territory, Come what on. are you doing about it? So yes, if you're not, if you're just standing around, you know, watching TV, not um, praying and not taking authority, we are going to be consumed by fear. Yeah, and you know, I've, I've realized this, you know, and I can say this because I was the guy, 23 years of drugs, and then uh, Christian, so I, I know both, you know, I know that side probably a little bit better. Um, which helps me understand this side, right? Because I know how dark this was. So I, I just, the power of love, kind of like John, but you know, I believe drug dealing and all that is a, and uh, cooking meth and all that is a form of witchcraft anyway, yeah. right? You get to move people however you want to move them with the drug. And uh, man, I forgot what I was gonna say right now. But uh, the, the reality is that I think, oh, I think a lot of times, thank you Holy Spirit, um, we, we talk good Christianese and we say things, but the reality is, we don't, we don't see it practically lived. Most people think that you can't live the Bible practically anyway. That's why we have a high divorce. You know, we know love, yet we have a high divorce rate in Christianity. That makes no sense to me. How do you know love? We, we shout from the rooftops, have a relationship. But the reality is, if you were to tell me, which is this is kind of what happened to me a little bit, uh, to have a relationship with the Father, and we should yell, yell. But we're not stopping to really explain a relationship. Because if my idea of a relationship is I see my father once a month and he barely does for me, then I go to God with the same perception because that is the way I think. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I treat that relationship with that relationship. And so we, we have to start really explaining it really by our lives, too, because people see. Jesus never asked you for nothing that he wasn't willing to do himself. That's right. That's right. Right? And sometimes we get weird in Christianity, you know, and I believe in it all, you know, because but I think sometimes we get so weird that we forget the practicality of something. Just the basic, hey, let me go eat lunch with you, right? right. We, we, we don't do that. We don't, we don't wanna love our wives. We don't, we don't take from the Bible how Jesus loved us mm -hmm. and, and literally live it. Yeah. Yes. Are, are you with me? Yeah. Like, like yeah, how could you have a wife and not, that not be the most important thing in the planet? That's your first priority. How do we know that? Because we're his first priority. That's right. That's right. You, you know, so it's just all these little things that I, I feel like we don't, really know we've, we've gotten so good at yelling out uh, all the Christian terms that we don't barely we barely live it now we've become familiar with it and we just walk out however but in, in selling drugs you live you live it yeah because if, if well if you don't somebody calls you out on it and then you you just get <laughs> excommunicado you get you know kicked off <laughs> right so oh yeah you could call out somebody in the, in the world and then they just kind of take it or you fight or whatever or they change mm -hmm. but you can't do that in the church you call somebody out and get offended yeah. and they leave yeah oh no come on wow. that's the difference yeah <laughs> and they'll go 24 hours straight we get tired and uh, you know uh, you know when you sell drugs think about it i came all the way to texas wow so Where i was with from? hoboken new jersey oh okay. yeah right outside of the water oh, uh, george okay. washington bridge separated me and john oh wow 
right? So he walked in some of the clubs I walked in. So think about and it. And now they know each other. Wow. No, not at all. Wow. That's so cool. We used to party at a place called Limelight that was a church and it was a club. They got girls in cages while you, it's wow. in the church. Oh my yeah, God. That's a whole nother. So. We're back. We are back. We're back. We're back. We're back. back. Come on. We weren't done yet. So Come go on. ahead. So Pastor Juan Martinez has written a new book called. Beyond. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road, yep. Unlocking the Promises of God. And I was just asking him while we were, um, while Daniel was fixing the We were camera, interrupted. Yes. Was what gave him this idea to, it's it's based on the story of like the Wizard of Oz, yeah. the Yellow Brick Road. What but it has nothing that, to do with wizards, yeah, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what gave you that idea? Uh, well, first of all, look, John Ramirez did the forward on it. You know, so obviously if it's going to be something about walking it out, you got to have John on it. Yes. And uh, you know what? What gave me an idea was one day I was praying and the, the Lord began to show me and I felt in my spirit impressed uh, this. I, I can almost, uh, you know, when you hear the spirit of God, uh, it was that when I pray, that prayer was uh, us exchanging wishes, right? At the cross, we exchange every no, every yes to a promise is a no to the flesh. Right? That's right. So I'm exchanging wishes, uh, and uh, the streets of gold are in heaven are gold. That's what the Bible says. And so when we release these things, I kind of saw bricks of gold. Kind of every time I was releasing heaven, I was seeing bricks of gold uh, laid out before me. And if you look at, the, remember the book of James, brother James says, Jesus, that brother, he says that our tongue is like the rudder. So um, when I was releasing, I was following the bricks. I was following the bricks, and when I was sharing that with the church, the, I, I don't know, the Wizard of Oz that just started coming out of my mouth, wow. uh, and, I was, you know, and I, was rem I was reminded, you know, so my story with the Wizard of Oz, and kind of what God was showing me, kind of, it's what's in this book. So, you know, a lot of times, if you remember Dorothy, she, um, you know, she wanted to go somewhere far, far away, yeah. somewhere where there's no trouble, and that's what we do as Christians. We actually want to run away from the storm, but Jesus did not run away from yeah. the storm. He faced it. And so when we come according to the dying of the flesh, we have to face the fleshy things with the spirit of the living God. And that's how we face the giants, right? Yeah, and that's right. how we overcome. She wants to go far, far away. And you've, you've seen the story of Judy Garland? Yes. When she sings, somewhere yeah. over the rainbow. You know it? Yeah. Somewhere yeah. far, right? If you think about Judy Garland, she, she went, she's going through a lot of stuff too. Yes, she did. Right? And, and uh, she wanted to go some far away from her troubles. Yes. And so she got medicated. Yes. And that's what we did, right? Yes. So I was addicted to drugs 23 years of my life. I got medicated to, to avoid my troubles. It wasn't really the drug. It was the rooted issues. And, it, it, and so what winds up happening is that in this story, if you remember, the storm hits her or the window. So she goes through a window, right? Wow. So the window. I like the whole window, and I don't want to explain it all. But, yeah, uh, no, give and, your book away. So she, she, she goes somewhere far, far away, but far away to face her troubles. She faces the witch. She faces everything. Yeah. And I'll give you a little bit of this because okay. I thought this was cool. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Brother John was mentioning it earlier, so I'll mention it. So you see me with the ruby red shoes. Yeah. I actually got red shoes with, like, rhinestones just because I ah, love shoes. And, awesome. You know, you can't knock me on it, but uh, <laughs> hey, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got them for when the book launches. You know, I've been holding it until the Lord, you know, uh, that I would wear them the day that it came out. Uh -huh. So I've been holding them for about two and a half years. I've been going nuts. But uh, the cool part is that you remember... The house lands, she gets the, the shoes. Now, Glenda the Good Witch, I don't call her a witch, I call her the Holy Spirit, because she is the one who really guides her on what to do. And what does she say? Start at the beginning. Yes. So you see the road, it has a beginning. Yes. That's There's the book of not. Genesis, right? Because yes. we go to the original plan when God restores it all. Yes. Later throughout the day, you know, I explain some stuff, obviously my own personal life and all of that, because uh, she really, uh, you know, we, heaven is our home. We're citizens of heaven, so therefore we're heaven. Right. <laughs> That's Right? I like that. I like that. See the shirt? No place like home. Oh. Okay, so so here's the thing. Uh, boom. The witch tries to take off later. Remember, she, tries, she says, give me the shoes. Give me the shoes. Yeah. She, can't, she, it, she can't take them. So God has given us an authority. Mm -hmm. And this authority, you know what we do as believers? This is what John teaches all the time. What we do as believers is we give up the authority. Yes. We, we would have took off the shoes and gave it to the witch right. and then complained about it. Right. But the reality is when you know who you are, Come on. She, she went there. Hey, he, he said, I can't help you until you go get the broom. Isn't that crazy? You finally get there. Wow. 
Yeah. Right? And so she, she gets there and boom, she, she's asking for the shoes. She doesn't give it to her. And so what she do? She reaches for the bucket of water, which is the word of God. Uh, and then she goes, I'm melting, I'm melting, I'm melting. And, and as she melts, the, the, all the little guys that are behind there, you know, they they get nervous because they think they, they all drop back a little bit. You know, yes. the, 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 the cowardly lion and all them, they drop back a little bit because they think they're going to get attacked. The guy comes with a real sweet voice and he says, thank you. You have set us free. Go watch it again. He says, thank you. You've set us free. And the Lord showed me. He said, yes. listen, when you use the word of God to confront whatever witch or whatever thing is in the way wow. of you uh, having this heavenly reality, because remember, yeah. there's no place like home. There's wow. no place like home. I so love anyway, it. That's kind of what's kind of in there. Wow. So that's what that, I love how you use that what you just said. Oh, it's super cool. Oh, that that awesome. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. That's and so you get awesome courage, book. right? Wow. It was really her facing herself. Yes. Well, each, really think about wasn't it. the each, lion cur courage? Each one of them yeah. represented the heart and courage. And Fact. But remember wow. that it was really, Dorothy, you worry too much. Dorothy, everything was re really, she just went somewhere to really face herself. Right. And that's right. how you, when you lose yourself, you find you. Fine. That's right. She, yeah. she found out. Her. Yes. When she got back, she's like, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Remember the thing? She just, wow. everything became home. Mm. Yeah. What yes. a great story. Oh, what an so awesome much. testimony. Well, thank you. Um, we want to show the audience your book. Juan Martinez, you're going to want to get this book yes. too. Come on. It's full of analogy. I know The Wizard of Oz was one of my favorite movies as a kid because it was like the first show that came on and then we knew like Frosty, we knew Christmas yeah. was coming oh, yeah. soon, right? Because like, <laughs> that was the start of all oh, those, uh, what is that, the peanuts? Um, Charlie Brown. Charlie, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. Come on, with a little yeah. Christmas tree. Yes, yeah. and then and all that. So thank you so much yeah. for coming up. Yeah. We just thoroughly enjoyed our time yeah. with yeah. Lon and John and um, what amazing testimonies that God is doing in their life. We thank you so much, viewers, for joining us. And um, next week, we're going to have Nancy with True Hope. So she's going to talk on healing and deliverance, which is kind of goes, excuse me, along with what we're talking about. So we thank you for tuning in. And um, thank you. And Kim and Juan and John, thank you so much. And we will see you.